I'm Aaron with Spray Foam Solutions, and today we have another video on our frequently asked questions. Today's question is, is your spray foam a vapor barrier? So we're going to discuss the difference between vapor barriers and air barriers. Our closed cell foam is a true vapor barrier. Our open cell foam is something we call a vapor retarder. The both though are true air barriers meaning they stop all air transfer through the wall by completely sealing it. So with that being in mind, back in the 70s, there was a study done by, I believe it was Texas A&M University, on a study on vapor diff diffusion through product. That's the actual transfer of vapor through a product that's not a vapor barrier. And what they did was they created two wall sections that were three foot, by three foot. Similar, in exact same dimensions, and they simulated a heating season on both of them. This one here, they put a three quarter inch, actually a one inch by one inch hole on it. This one here, nothing. Now the drywall, you gotta remember, drywall it has a very, very high perm rating. The higher the number, the more vapor can go through it. it has a perm rating of around 50 is the average perm rating on that. So, how much difference is a three, or that one inch hole gonna make on this here? They found out after a heating season, this one here had 32 quarts of water transferred through it. This one here had one third of a quart. Completely different results. So with that study to determine that vapor diffusion is not a significant problem in the billing envelope under normal circumstances. Now, for example, if you're going to be building a sauna room, a swimming pool room with thousands of gallons of water evaporating to the house, or a lumber kiln where you have lumber being dried and lots of moisture there. Those are situations where you would want a true vapor barrier. You would need a true vapor barrier because you have a very high vapor drive. But on your standard home in climate zone five, our customers here, you can put seven to eight inches of open cell in that roof deck and you have a sufficient air barrier and R value to stop the conductive, heat loss, keep the inside of that foam from getting cool, and you're stopping the vapor on the inside by stopping the air movement. Think about a typical home built with fiberglass where you have two to three air changes per hour. Think how much moisture is coming into the house, transferring through those walls with that kind of a vapor exchange. On our spray foam homes, you know, we're getting an air change maybe every three to four hours. So it's completely a different story, and there's a lot of concern about that. That's why I thought it was important to address this with this here. <clears throat> Again, this is for our customers here, Climate Zone 5. If you were, for example, to say go to Minnesota or up into Canada where it's extremely cold, and you have long winters where that temperature differential is much bigger, we call it the delta T, is much bigger for much longer, those are again, those are again areas where we have a very high vapor drive. So then you go to the deep south where it's a cooling season, again, it's a completely different scenario. Their open cell works even more of the time. So the big thing is that it's sprayed properly. Make sure you're choosing a reputable contractor who's gonna stand behind his work and take care of you properly. But I thought that could help you out there, guys. So any questions on that, feel free to reach out. Our Facebook page is Spray Foam Solutions, and our website is www.sprayfoamsolutionsohio.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for even more of these videos. We're gonna be doing more project videos, all kinds of stuff coming up. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later.